Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. How many of you have been to FanFest before? Good. How many have been to an economics lecture before? Excellent. I got the, got the uh, good followers. Uh, welcome to uh, FanFest 2012, and uh, I just must extend my appreciation to all of you for showing up at 10 a.m. on a Friday morning to listen to Internet Space Economics. Because we do know spaceships are serious business. And thank you to all of those that are watching the HT stream and the uh, uh, live stream. And I hope everybody will get a little bit uh, insight into what 2011 brought us for EVE. Uh, before I continue, we must also thank all of the people that make this happen. Not only FanFest and EVE Online, but for a lecture like this one and for collecting all the statistics that we have, there's a team of people. This is not a one-man show. So we have a team in research and statistics. We have a web team that creates awesome uh, visualization that you will see later on. And we have uh, various uh, individuals around the company that make this happen. So let's give them a good hand. But of course, all the mistakes are mine. So highlights for 2011. It was an eventful year indeed, right? There were three major expansions, incursions, Incarna, and Crucible. It was content rich. It has new stuff being added, new features. It was a little bit controversial at times. So the question must be, how did that uh, impact EVE? Did it change EVE at all? Did it impact the, grow the growth of the economy? What really happened when we look at the numbers? These will be the questions I will try to tackle here today. Now, first of all, we need to know a little bit about where people live in this world. How is that distribution? And Eve is now nine years old. Next year's 10th anniversary. Who's going to be here next year? <laughs> Excellent. So in uh, quarter one of 2011, uh, this was the distribution between NullSec, LowSec, HighSec, and Warhol Space. And as we know, the majority of the population is in uh, HighSec, but also remember that those that live in HighSec are not only noobs, but also people that are the infrastructure, the logistics for life in uh, Warhol and uh, zero, zero Space. Did that change? Not that much. And as time goes, and as Eve grows, we are very much into the uh, law of large numbers. All changes become gradual and small. It is, though, interesting to see that there is a movement from people from null sec over to wormhole space. And as, and as all of you know, wormhole space has become really popular for those that like to uh, live in a PVP type of a environment and yet have good income, and have uh, uh, access to valuable resources. Now, these are all players in EVE, noobs included. So, uh, if we look at the uh, population, as it is in, in quarter one 2012, as we have here on the left side of the, of the screen, and compare it to characters that have 5 million skill points or more. Five million skill points, you know, you're out of the uh, first couple of months into the third month uh, of, of activity. Uh, that portion is considerably smaller. Unfortunately, we lose quite a bit of players in the first three months. I don't want to blame you guys, but you don't necessarily treat them nice. But what is interesting to me as well is that uh, once you are above this threshold, you start to participate in PvP and in Warhol space. And as you can see, NullSec is up to 20%, 21% almost, and Warhol space is at 6.4% at this point in time. <laughs> so when people progress in the system, they do go and uh, participate in this high level of gameplay in EVE. And it is not an easy world to live in, and I'm not so sure that we should expect 
a higher portion of people necessarily participating in this high-end gameplay. It is a tough life. Not everyone can uh, survive in NullSec. <clears throat> I know I can't. But uh, that's because high sec is the only true PvP there is. Right? Is there any other PvP than market PvP? No? OK. What you guys can do, though, treat them nice for the first three months. You know, get them acquainted, help them. We have great institutions like the universities, EVE University, and other institutions in EVE that help players to adapt to this world. So, you know, think about it as a, as a real hunter. Not only target the uh, prey when it's young and fragile, but make it grow, help it to understand, and then <laughs> the prey is much bigger. So you can help a lot in making sure that people enjoy Eve for the first three months. That little learning curve that some call learning cliff is something that we all need to, to work uh, uh, to improve. Now, there is though an interesting development happening uh, uh, between 2010 and 2012. If we look at all characters and the space that they live in, Amar, Kaltari, Galenti, or Minimatar, we are seeing a, quite an increase in Kaltari space. However, if we exclude Jita characters, <laughs> there is actually a decline in Kaltari space and an increase in Amar space. Uh, I would like to contribute this to the simple fact that Amar is bigger, and this is the first sign that we are seeing that space is getting limited. People are moving where there are more resources, less congestion. So, between 2010 and 12, so each column is, is one year, we see an increase here, here on, the, on the Kaltari side, but it's really, uh, the uh, growth is really happening in, in Amar. But Jita is, of course, become the major trade-up, and you will see some interesting numbers about that in a, in a few moments. Now, we also measure not only uh, hardcore data and actions that you take, we also ask you guys, as EVE players, through various surveys, what you like to do in EVE, what you like about EVE, uh, what you would like us to change, etc. We get really good participation in all the surveys that we sent out in the newsletter surveys, uh, in the customer profile surveys, and etc. So I just really want to thank you all for participating, and it is valuable information. Just want to emphasize to everyone, we do look at this on a regular basis, and it does impact the way we work and think. So please continue to answer the surveys uh, in the manner that you've done so uh, well in the past. And here's a result from a customer profile survey. This was done prior to Incarna in May of 2011. And of course, you guys like PvP. We ask you, what do you like to do? PvP is a 75% uh, acceptance rate. That's really what you guys like to do. Now, this I do not understand. I mean, who dislikes mining? <laughs> I mean, it's an awesome feature. You know, you can go uh, AFK, you can go and, and, uh, and uh, chat with your friends, you can have the operation running and do something else at the same time, right? <laughs> nah, not quite. Not quite. But yet, 26% dislike mining, seriously. And if you look kind of to the left of this picture, we got the uh, zero, 0 gameplay, PvP exploration, this kind of deep, hardcore gameplay. Uh, we got wormhole exploration, that is, uh, truly uh, going out there and, and uh, putting your life on the line. And then we start to go to the right where you have mission running, role playing, mining, and so on. So you guys are telling us that you like more the hardcore stuff and less the softer stuff. Even though planned interaction and factional warfare tends to be on the right side, but we know why. So what do you say you do? You just told us what you like to do, but what do you say that you do? Well, most of you do mission running. And there's actually an equal amount that does mining and PvP. And yet you tell us you dislike mining. So there's one thing that you tell us that you do. There's another thing that you actually do. But if EVE is such a complex environment that in order to survive, you have to do your course. You have to do your duties. You have to earn your ISK. 
to be able to blow somebody up, right? So it's not just about doing fun things. It's serious business, right? Now, if you look uh, at the mission running a little bit more closely, uh, this is uh, in-game data, uh, 2011 through 2012, that is including February. Uh, missions per day per subscriber is the darker uh, red line that you're seeing there. And it's declined a little bit uh, throughout the year, but as soon as we put out Crucible, we saw, saw a high jump in that. People were coming back, and people were, uh, we are getting new people in, and of course, one of the first things that they try out are missions. This is a really good indicator about activity in general. We are seeing people uh, earning ISK because they need that ISK to do something fun. So it's a measurement for us. And mission rewards per day per subscriber is also uh, on the uptake, which means that there is also uh, high-level players that are running missions. There are between 150,000 and 200,000 characters that finish at least one mission in any given month. So yes, you like PvP. Yes, EVE is a sandbox game. But you earn your living through missions. Now, shooting each other. Yes, why can't you just be nice, like a developer said here once? Why all of this, 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 this violence? Why not just all live happily? ever after, and, and trade, and, and do some business. Well, the secret answer of the, to that is, of course, if there would be no war, there would be no consumption. And if there's no consumption, there's no profit for us. So we do like shooting each other, preferably in the face. Now, on a daily average, around 10,000 ships are killed. It went down uh, after incursions. And it's an interesting factor, and this is a repeated theme that you will see throughout my slides, is that, uh, is that uh, even during the months of the summer, when we had Incarna lunch and we had the, uh, a high number of subscribers participating, all of these activities, missions, PvP, were stable or going down. And it wasn't until we released Crucible that we saw the increase again uh, in, uh, in PvP activity. And to such a great extent that PvP activity now is higher than ever before. Do we like that? Yes, yes. we do. Because? Drives Thank you. More profits. Now, did anything change? Well, wormhole, wormhole popularity continues to increase. We have activity parameters back to pre incarnate levels, which is a good thing. So we really didn't see any major changes to the game in 2011. There was a lot of fluctuations. But in terms of activity and the stuff that you guys do, there was no really big change except in questions. This is the number of people participating in, uh, in questions. And it's an interesting factor that we haven't seen before is that activity is increasing quite rapidly with this feature. So people seem to like it. But why would people like incursions? Ah, we have noticed that there's mostly one type that is run, Vanguard, Vanguards in high sec. They can earn up to 450 million ISK per day on the average. And remember, as an economist, if my left foot is in cold water, and my right foot is in hot water, boiling water, on the average, I'm fine. There's a huge variation. And there is a handful of players that are earning a really large amount of risk for this, and others that are just participating at a, at a low level. However, we are up to now 5% of the population participating, which is similar to wormhole space. And as you will see a little bit later on, total ISK into the game is similar uh, between uh, incursions and wormhole space, talking about ISK coming into the game. So there's been a little huge discussion on the forums if this is three, you know, big problem, this is destroying even and so on. It's a little bit exaggerated. You know, incursions are not the problem today, but there's definitely balance issues. But they seem to be more towards game balance and you know, some people being able to earn more money than others. So do expect that we will be looking into this in 2012, but we do not see this as a 
crucial thing that must be fixed tomorrow. But be on the look, be on the lookout for some changes. Now we have gone through individual parameters. A couple of years back, we did a research with a Finnish university, trying to define GDP for virtual worlds. So what we came up with is called gross user uh, product, the value created by you guys in the EVE universe. And this is how that has evolved from October 2010 until February 2012. The gray area is total gross user product created in the system. This is the value that you guys created through all kinds of actions. Example, uh, the red line uh, is uh, NPC traded goods. So that's when uh, NPCs bought goods from, uh, from you guys or sold you goods. And that's actually a net sink. It's like an export, uh, sorry, it's like an import uh, into, into a uh, economy. You paid more for those goods that you got in. This includes skill books, blueprints, etc. However, the most value is created, again, by you guys, the industrialist, uh, the logistics producers for the alliances, those creating the items, the ships, and so on. That's where the biggest part of the net value creation comes in. Now, there is an interesting development throughout this period. When we look at incursions, you can see that there is a huge build-up and a huge addition in the gross user product uh, in the months of incursion that's being released. A measurement of a good release, more activity, more production. Uh, in Karna, flatland. It's a really interesting thought because at the time, we were not calculating this uh, variable on a, on a daily or weekly basis. We usually calculate this on a monthly basis. But we could have looked at this number in, in July and said, hey, there's something going on here. People are just not producing. They're doing something else. Some are using the lasers in a different place, flying around in a specific system and, and shooting at monuments. <laughs> that doesn't create a lot of value, does it? It was a beautiful show, but... So it, it's a, actually a really good measure because then we had Crucible. It skyrocketed. So we have actually a very usable measure that we will be reporting more on in 2012 that just gives us a comparison to what has happened in the past. And even if we look at this in real terms, this was nominal on the previous slide, and even real terms per capita, we are seeing that in 2011, the economy truly did grow, thanks to Crucible and thanks to you guys coming back and showing us that you'll really like flying in space, producing stuff, and destroying it. So, destruction. I thought that I would show you a long list of numbers of stuff being, long list of numbers of stuff being destroyed. You know, what's the most destroyed ship and so on. But the web team said, you know, why don't you do it in a cool way? So they have created an application where we can actually put economic statistics number into the EVE star map with some pretty colors and different sizes. So let's dive a little bit into this. Let's kill the lights and go in and see what's going on. Blue means uh, production. And the, on the picture on the left, nope, we want to go back. And on the picture on the left, yes. You can see the blue dots being production. And the bigger, the more production in that particular place. And where there's a gray, there's actually no production at all. Let's zoom to the standard uh, north-south uh, structure of the star map. And you actually start to see some uh, pretty cool stuff. You can see, of course, Gita uh, and the Kaldari areas where the industrialists tend to, tend to live. But you can see how the rural, the rural area of Eve is from the north towards the west down to Amar. But what surprised me most is to see, be able to see on a map that there is production almost everywhere in the system. 
Now, was this cool from the web team? Yes. Yes? Do you guys like it? Yes. Well, let's thank the web team. <laughs> Wormholes are, of course, not on the map and secret. So let's look at destruction and uh, relative uh, production and, and, and destruction. So what we have on this map is that net production is blue and net destruction is red. This is for all uh, the entire year of uh, 2011. And if we zoom out to the standard north-south perspective of the map, you can see again there are hotspots of uh, fighting. But what I found also interesting is that there's destruction in every system of EVE. So the world is really populated. As we saw in the, the beginning, where people are moving to, from Kaltari to, to Amar, action is happening all in EVE throughout the year of 2011. Now, there will be a discussion later on this afternoon from the web team about this feature. Is it something that you guys could even use for your own statistics? So I encourage you to go there and, uh, and talk to the guys and uh, get some more information about what it is. And you can see, actually, if you, if you click a dot, they will be able to put additional information <laughs> in there. So cool stuff uh, from the web team. But let's continue. Now, here is the uh, two bigger systems with ma mass uh, destroyed. And we are measuring mass, not number of ships, in, uh, in megatons. Uh, what you can see there is that in these two systems, uh, one had a lot of battleships being destroyed. The other one, more of battleships, uh, capital ships, and, uh, and the supercarriers and titans. So the question is, do you guys know which system these, these are? O2O, 2X. Did somebody say that? Now, what is the system that had the most ship mass destroyed? Tamar? Gita? Okay. Indeed, Gita. Where the traffic is, where the people are, that's where the fighting takes place. So not only is Cheetah the major uh, trade hub, but there's actually a lot of PvP activity ongoing in the system. So what do you guys say? Has the EVE economy grown in 2011? Yes. Thank you. The inflation question. Yes. Oh, yes. Let's skip that. I'll go there. <laughs> what you can see here is a measurement that we actually use uh, as an internal tool this is inflation from 2004 until to date. You can see the green area being the area where we would like inflation to be. And I'll, <laughs> I will point out that I was hired in 2008. Uh, fluctuation in, in inflation has been considerable throughout the years. And the current fluctuation isn't that much about what we've seen in the past. However, we do not like it to be above these ranges, so we are trying to, to fight it. Let's zoom into 2011. We can see definitely the same economic cycle. When there is an, there's a successful expansion, we do get increased demand and prices go above the limits. That's not a bad thing necessarily, because once uh, things start to cool down after an expansion, two to three months, depending on the success, uh, we see a cool down. Now, if we continue to do this, it may be a little bit too much of a cooldown, but we learned our lesson and we've done that. And again, you see the same thing happen. So uh, increased inflation does not necessarily have to be a bad thing if it's due to increased demand. But it means that we have to be more careful about how we manage the economy in the year of 2012. And I am a little bit worried myself when I look at this graph. This shows the mineral prices uh, for 2011. You can see that in the beginning of the period, tritanium was the major cause uh, for increases in, uh, in uh, the mineral price index. And since these minerals are the basis of everything else, it tends to go through the system. 
towards the end, Maxalon uh, was the driver for uh, uh, price increases, but that was due to the new uh, battle cruisers that required this material for production, and a huge number was produced in uh, December and January of 2012. But we can also cause these inflation changes ourselves. Here we see what happened when the Dell blog was published uh, on uh, the new PI and uh, head and custom offices operated by Yugas. Price speculation started right away. Prices continued to increase, and once we released Crucible, people were trying to understand what's going on and started hoarded, hoarding material. Once stability was gained, though, uh, prices started to decline again, and uh, people now understand better how the system works, and prices are at a similar level as they were before. So a change can be causing inflation temporarily, and that's nothing we can do to, uh, to counter that. That just has to go through its own uh, steps. So the underlying causes for the inflation in general, we can say that are on the supply side, mineral prices, moon materials, the famous bottleneck, and PEI and custom offices, but impact of that is declining. On the demand side, simply increased warfare, new ships coming into the game, growth, which is happening, and higher skills of people. We get more people that can buy Tech 2 material and Tech 3 material and so on, is simply driving the economy forward. And, as economists know, amount of ISK does matter. So how much is it? 26 trillion come through bounties. 8.9 trillion come through wormhole. 8 trillion come through incursions. ISK does not come through minerals. 4.3 trillion are mission rewards. And then we have 3.4 trillion other faucets. So these are the major faucets of ISK coming into EVE at any, in any given month. This is the monthly average for quarter four in 2011. So when syncing this out, 6.8 trillion are skill books, 6.1 is blueprints, 3.7 is fees and taxes, and 4.6 trillion are other things. Hmm. Fees and taxes. There's too much is coming into the game. Isn't this a low number in fees and taxes? Hmm. No, I'm just saying, just saying. So, simple math, 50 trillion in, 26 out, net 24 trillion growth per month. This is what we need to change. This is what we need to tackle. Overall, there's high aggregate demand in the system. There are too few things to counter. Outlook for increased demand in the system. Things are going well, and uh, with the expansions that are coming in, in May, and the activity we're seeing now, even two months uh, after the last expansion, are all indicating that uh, we will be having a really, really successful year. So, I would say, I expect the inflation to continue to be high through Q2 of 2012, and uh, some decline in quarter three. But what quarter four will bring us, you will be learning more about later in the, on FanFest. But let's look at Plex. Plex, the in-game market trend. We have seen a steady increase in volume and price throughout the years. Popularity has increased on a con consistent basis. I do not believe that we have reached our equilibrium yet. There is just too high of a demand for Plex, that even though sales continue, and notice that in February of, of uh, 2012, more than 100,000 trades happened in the system with Plex. Plex value as a total of the total trade value on the EVE market is now up to 25%. So it's become one of the biggest, it is the biggest traded item in EVE, and as such, is starting to worry me. So, this is what we stated last year. Does anyone remember this? 
Why? Players, sometimes aren't ears, could easily manipulate the Plex market, excluding other players from playing it. It's just a fact. I can't deny it. We have corporations, we have characters that have is counted in trillions. We do want stability. CCP as a company doesn't care really about the price as such, but we want stability. We want you guys to be able to play the game. And the lower actually the price of Plex is, the more people can play the game through play, uh, can pay for the game through playing. So that's not a bad thing to us. But first and foremost, we want stability. So there has to be clear rules for the Plex market due to this different nature and its size. What am I talking about really? Something like this. Imagine that there is a price over time that fluctuates in this manner. Now there's a long-term price trend in there, and that's just the market. The market is just doing what it needs to do. Nothing wrong with that. At times, there can be attacks on the market. There can be instability that needs to be tackled. However, we do not like to do stuff like that, and we would prefer that we wouldn't have to do it. So, what does it mean? The Plex market will be closely monitored and regulated by CCP. But CCP, the CSM, sorry, will play an important watchdog role in that. The objectives for these regulations will be to curb market manipulation by players, or RMTs in some cases, that affect regular players' ability to subscribe via Plex. That's our sole purpose in terms of uh, the, uh, of the, um, of the uh, operation of the, of the price. We like to recirculate plexes from permabanned accounts to the mar uh, back to the market, because if we are permabanning somebody who has a lot of plexes on their account, we are taking away from the market and hence by putting an office pressure on price. I'm going to tell you a secret. Shh. Do you know how many plexes are on permabanned accounts? Should I tell you? I didn't, I didn't say something. I, I didn't say it. <laughs> but those are sitting there, and if we do not imp, uh, put these regulations into place, I will not be able to put them back on the market. So I need the tools to be available to, to interact if need arises, but I prefer not to. So when will this happen? Policy uh, will be described in more details in an annual review that we are working on and will hopefully be available a couple of weeks after FanFest. It will be in small step throughout 2012. We will have full reports uh, shared with the CSM. Key topics, it will be a key topic on all the CSM visits once they come to Iceland, just a session. What did we do? How did the market do? What is the situation? They will be able to get more detailed information, and we will then distribute information that we can distribute publicly, on a, on a much more frequent basis than we have in the past on the specific, on the Plex market specifically. And this will be managed through the EVE Central Bank. So this is not a, a CCP function as such, it's just a management regulation of a really, really large market in EVE. So the statement for 2012 is EVE Central Bank may or may not, and this is an important, we may sometimes and sometimes we may not, take actions to intervene with the Plex market based on and this is really important, based on preset policy and objectives as determined by the CCP Council that would include me, a senior producer, and a, a person uh, from, the, uh, from the, game design of the, uh, of the game design part of the game. So it's not a single man show. It's just a council that goes over the situation and makes decision in collaboration. The CSM will be an integral part in this. They will, of course, not be responsible for anything else but just being a watchdog and having an opinion and communicating to you guys if you think this policy is crap or not that is being executed at any given time. So you will have an authority that will be able to review this for you and give you feedback uh, on the policy. 
So what does the future behold? Looking at other crystal balls. Growth is back, activity is increasing. It does highlight the isk faucet challenge that we have. Growth is good, no doubt, about that, no doubt about that, but it just put a more pressure on us to react. So we need to be careful in 2012, and don't be surprised if you see some new sinks uh, being added into the game or some new balancing uh, issues uh, being tackled in the coming months. Did I say taxes? <coughs> Fees? <coughs> no, I, I didn't mention that, did I? The upcoming ex expansion is likely to continue this demand pressure in the system. Remember to go to all the lectures, we got some awesome stuff. So I expect to see a continuous growth with upper pressure on price in quarter two of 2012. In Q3, we see prices come down again to some degree, and then comes Q4. And no more words about that. So, this is what I have for you today. Thank you all for coming and uh, participating. There is a reason for this uh, stupid looking mustache. And as you can see up there, uh, we have an annual drive called the Mustache March for the Icelandic Cancer Society. Uh, if you would like, greatly appreciate any contribution that will go into this account. As you can see, instructions are up on the screen. And now we will open up for questions. Do we have a runner with a mic? No? Okay. Uh, you run, find the mic. Actually, we are in a perfect room for just direct interaction. Thank you. What sort of uh, impact did the ice interdiction have on the market? The uh, ice interdiction on the market uh, was definitely a huge impact. That was one of the stories that we were uh, thinking about having here. We had to cut it out. It will be in the annual review, but it had a, a huge impact in terms of price and volume. Wait for the annual review and you will see it exactly. Uh, we haven't uh, deep uh, dived into that, so I wouldn't have an exact answer to the question of if the people that are uh, moving from Caltari to Amar space are doing it for incursions or a specific feature. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good question, but in general there are more resources available and less congestion. Question over here. All right. Uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you spoke about inflation, uh, you mentioned the total amount of, uh, of uh, ISKs uh, in the system. But I suppose uh, that uh, it should also be related to the number of uh, active players who share into, the, into that, uh, into that money, money, yep. uh, money. For, but uh, you didn't mention any information about the active players. Nope. Uh, uh, but uh, I suppose uh, you, <laughs> you, uh, you, you looked into that as well. Uh, absolutely. And uh, we, uh, the average ISK per account has increased from 400 million to 600 million in the last 12 months. Sorry, say, can you say From 400 million to 600 million ISK on the average oh. per character. All right. Thank so you. So we've seen a 50% increase there, which is one of the concerns. Sorry. How are we doing on time? 20 minutes? Excellent. Uh, wouldn't you say that ships destroyed is also an ISK sink in the economy? Say again, please. I mean, uh, uh, ISK faucet? Uh, it's, it's really low, so I can't really hear. It's the, the ships destroyed during PVP. Uh, wouldn't you call that a way for the economy to get ISK out of the system as well? No. Because if you destroy a ship, the material is going out. So value is going out, but the ISK that the person earned through a mission and then paid for the ship, the ISK is still in the system. The only way for ISK to leave the system is to pay something to an NPC. 
That's the only way for ISC to, to drop out. If you would have questions, just please come down the aisle here. And, and, and. So based on the uh, gross user product, I said earlier, it looks like ISC and assets, both are going up. And if you look at the inflation, it's maybe 10% or so, but the Plex price has doubled. Uh, is it fair to consider Plex a way to evaluate mudflation, like a de decrease in the, I don't know, the real value, the real world value of in-game ISK and assets? Mm -hmm. And if so, that seems like a lot of mudflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I understand you correctly, is Plex gold? Uh, yeah, I mean, is it, I mean it's, you know, it's the closest yep, conversion yep, yep, yep. to real world value, like dollars. As, as people have been pointing out in real life, uh, the gold prices have been going up because people don't believe the value of the dollar is the same as it was in the past. And even though inflation numbers in, in uh, the US have not been really high, people have seen that as a uh, distrust towards the dollar. And you could put that analogy on the Plex and say people want to put their money into Plex because that has a, some tangible value to it. So it could be that people are just hoarding Plex uh, to stockpile it. However, what we are seeing is that it's just the usage. It's such a popular feature uh, in EVE today. There are so many people using it to pay for the subscription. And that is what is driving up the biggest demand currently. I had a question about uh, the RMT banned account. How much is de gets destroyed from ban the banning account? Uh, there's something wrong with the system because I'm not hearing it really well, so you're... The banned accounts from RMT. Yeah, the, uh, the ISK on, on, on banned accounts. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that number in my, in my head, but that's, that's considerable. Uh, and we, we uh, do take that out of, this, out of the system as well. So that's also one of the things for us. Uh, yeah, you were talking uh, earlier about the distribution of characters uh, throughout various areas of space. Uh, I, I understand that's based on a snapshot at any given time. So if I am logged into my Jita account or if I am on a shopping trip into high sector to buy skill books, I'm a zero, zero resident, but I would show up as a high sector character in that snapshot. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. that correct? Yes, correct. But this was looking at the average over a period of time. Uh, do you, uh, the price of Mexilon has changed dramatically relative to the other minerals. Do you see that as something that needs specific intervention in any way? No. Uh, when it comes to individual items in EVE, players always have an option of doing something else. So if Mexilon prices are up, you can't build the new uh, battlecruisers, but so you will just go and build something else, and you will fly something different. If uh, a if, uh, uh, a PVP, or if a, uh, like the ice, ice mining uh, destruction uh, of the axioms in, in, in that uh, situation, if somebody's coming and, and, uh, and killing you, ganking you, you can just decide you go mine something else or do something else. So it doesn't prohibit you from participating in EVE Online. It does prohibit you maybe from a specific aspect of it, but you can still log in and do something that you want. So there's no reason on that ground for us to interfere with that market. I just uh, wondered if you've done any analysis on the increased taxation in high sec on PI, and that has in the knock-on effect on pulse fueling prices. I wonder if you've done any, an analysis to see if that's becoming more of a, an ISK sink, because people have to pay more for their fuel, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. the producers are paying more on planetary taxes. Yep. That, that will be one of the things that uh, we will be uh, looking at overall. Uh, one of my dreams has also been dynamic tax taxation in order to try to curb uh, behavior and, and congestion. So we have various different tools that we'll be looking at in, uh, in terms of possibilities of increasing things. But thank you. Good comment. I have a question about the induction of the uh, dust economy into the EVE economy. What do you think of the consequences that's going to have? Uh, question on the dust economy into the EVE economy. Yes, uh, and, and their the economy e is going to be driven by different parameters than the EVE economy and so mm -hmm. on. So it would be inclined to believe the, that yeah, they would have this, effect that, because it's given by different parameters and different users. It just yep. Uh, what I, I cannot uh, speak much about uh, the dust Eve link uh, at, at this point. Uh, we have Eno Joas and uh, Atli uh, talking for the dust uh, project uh, later on uh, today. Uh, 
<coughs> so you, can, you can look into, into that session. Uh, there will be a link in the, on the economic side, and it will be throttled slowly. So we, we will take step by step. So it will be gradually introduced into the system so that, to begin with, there will be a reduced incline. Over time, yeah. yeah. Okay. And remember, you. you know, dust will follow the same thing as, as EVE Online. There will be constantly added new material, and it will grow as time evolves. We did not, uh, good morning. Good morning. We did not hear you uh, talk about Aurum and what the impact is on, uh, on EVE. That, yeah, that, that, came, that came the Aurum question. Uh, we have not uh, talked a lot about Aurum, and it's just quite obvious. You guys saw Incarna didn't create a lot of economic activity, and uh, Aurum as such has been uh, not one of the biggest used features, but it's being used, and uh, people are, are still changing prices to Aurum, but it's at a relatively low level. Um, current taxes at the moment are modified by skill points, so high skill characters get taxed less. In terms of speculation with adding new taxes throughout the year, if new taxes were modified by skills, we might see a shift in the amount of ISK being earned to favour uh, higher skilled players. They would have more money to work with. How would you like to manage that situation? If I would tell you, I would have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just have to think about what will happen. But in, in, in general, this will not be the way to fix the system. As you can show, these were only 3.4 trillions, uh, so we will not going to be able to get all these out through this manner. That's quite obvious. So it just be one of the parameters that we have to adjust. Um, you were talking about CCP Plex console and the other people on the console except you. And honestly, are there other people are sure not that much experienced in economics that you, how much influence do you have on their decisions? I, I think somebody else should answer that question as how much influence I have on other people's making decisions. But uh, after working with the CSM now for what, Peter, three years? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Since 2008. Wor working with the, the CSM for, for three years, I know that they can be very influential uh, as well. So it will be a constant dialogue between both parties. And uh, a lot of people are pretty smart at CCP, so I'm, I'm confident that we will have a good council. Uh, have you had two, three more questions, Peter? Uh, one, question, one more question, because one more question. There, and we only we have 10 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, one more question. There's been some rumors about changes in loot in the drone regions from drone loot to bounties. Do you have anything you can share with us about that? Rumors on the drone regions. I did not tell you anything about that. <laughs> I did not tell you anything about that. Anyhow, thank you all for showing up on a Friday at 10 a.m. It's always, always a pleasure and hope to see you at roundtables. And if anyone has some is to spare for that Mustache account, It'll be great. Thank you.